I am Ismail Shah, I am a professor of physics and of material science. I have a joint appointment in the two departments. I have been working here for about uh, 12 years. Before that, I was at DuPont Company. I served as a senior research scientist there for 12 years. Um, while at DuPont Company, at, towards the end actually for, of my career at DuPont Company, I worked on titanium dioxide particles. Um, as I was leaving DuPont Company, like anybody who leaves DuPont Company, they make you sign a document saying that you won't work in this area anymore, or not anymore, but at least for five years. So I did. But I, all I knew at that time was titanium dioxide. I knew everything about titanium dioxide. So I thought, what can I do with this thing? Uh, it turned out that there are lots of different applications for titanium dioxide in addition to being an Oreo cookie and toothpaste and in all the paints in the world. Um, it, it's a very photoactive material. You can use that to generate an electron and hole which can be used for oxidizing or reducing things. Uh, so therefore, it is a very good uh, uh, agent to degrade pollutants in the atmosphere. Uh, so I got into this area of uh, photocatalysis. Now, titanium dioxide itself has a very large band gap, so therefore it is sensitized by um, the uh, higher energy part of the solar spectrum, which is the UV light. As such, uh, it, is, it uses only 8 to 10 percent of the total spectrum. So what happens to the rest of the spectrum? It just uh, doesn't get absorbed by titanium dioxide. So that was my initial research, how to modify the electronic structure of titanium dioxide. So it can be made to absorb uh, visible light, which is the major part of the solar spectrum. So we did that a lot. And in doing so, we also recognized the fact that this material can also be used as a photovoltaic. So we got into photovoltaics and we started working with what is called a Grad cell cell, which used titanium dioxide nanoparticles as the main uh, material for generating electricity from light. And while doing that, we also realized that this mechanism is something very similar to what happens in polymers, where you don't have a single interface like a silicon uh, solar cell device, but multiple interfaces. So then we looked, started looking into polymer materials. And that is uh, one of the major area of uh, my research right now, looking at the polymer photovoltaic devices. And we look at not only the materials part of it, we also look at the device design, device geometry and all the issues that are related to the interfaces. There are a whole bunch of them in uh, the device and uh, that's one of the research areas. In a so all of these things revolve around the theme of nanotechnology. All of these materials that I've been talking about are nanostructured materials. Uh, so in that genre, we also, in, in fact, in physics department here, there's a big uh, uh, interest in magnetic nanomaterials. So when things become small in size, they do funny things uh, like mag magnets also. They lose all their basically magnetization when they become small. Uh, so that means if you make a magnetic recording, for high density you want small particles, but when you make the particles small, the, it doesn't record anymore. So how do you make small particles yet keep their magnetization? That's the big theme of the research of not only mine, but lots of people in this uh, in United States and in the in the world. So we look at ma nanomagnetism. So being a materials physicist, uh, I synthesize things, I make things, um, in uh, I make new materials, design new materials, uh, and then I of course characterize it and look at for the applications for these materials in new and unique uh, way, shape, and form.